reusing laptop monitors, creating a neat project, and keeping things out of the landfill. Today, in Mikey's Lab. Welcome back to the lab. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below to ensure that you get all of the latest updates on science, DIY, making, engineering, mini myth Mondays that we bring you every single week. Now if you've been with us for a little bit, you'll notice that there was a bit of a hiatus there. I do apologize, I was very sick over the last week and was just not able to produce videos. It seems like we're back on schedule. Uh, and I'll be pushing a lot more content now to try and get caught back up. So if I'm coughing a lot in this video, you know why. I apologize. I'll try to cut as many uh, as much of it out as I can. So this showed up today. Actually, a couple days ago. But this showed up in the mail. And we're going to use this to take an old monitor from a laptop and reuse it and bring it back to life. So lab code up. We're going to learn something today. So what we have here... Right, we have the monitor itself, we have a piece of cardboard, We've got some hot glue sticks, hot glue gun, and a knife. And this should be pretty much all we need. We've also got this over here is a 12 volt power supply that's plugged in, and an HDMI video source to test with. So let's go ahead and cut open this package and uh, get it building. I always like getting mail. Always, always like getting mail. It's like Christmas, every single time, even though I bought it for myself. Roll bubble wrap. Okay. Let's unroll this rather large amount of bubble wrap and see what's in the mystery package. All right. Now, bubble wrap. Oh look, it's a bubble wrap bag. There wasn't enough bubble wrap before. Wrapped in tape. Alrighty then. Alright. Trying to get this back in screen for you. I'm sorry I wandered there for a minute. Apologize if you can hear that. All right. So what we have in the box, and I apologize, I already knew what it was. It's a controller. Uh, we're gonna cut to the computer in a minute, and I'll show you how to search for which controller will work with your LCD. It's very important that you get the right one, so that it works directly with it and it speaks the same language as the monitor itself. Now these are generally anywhere between twenty and forty dollars depending on the monitor uh... it's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a new monitor uh... you can get them even cheaper if you look for sales and you're not in, in, not in a rush uh... i paid twenty three dollars for this one so if you're going to pick out a controller the one thing you need to know about the monitor is the model number so we're going to flip this over and we can see right there we can see right there is the model number. I apologize if uh, things are going out of shot here, but this is what we got. Okay. So we'll dip down to the computer here for one second, and we'll uh, we'll search eBay and we'll find the controller. All right. So here we are at the desktop. Uh, this is the the product that I actually did purchase, uh, and the controller board that I actually did purchase. Uh, you basically search for the model number of the the panel that you have and it will pull up a lot of results as I said I paid around $25 US for this particular controller and it got me a beautiful monitor for $25 that would have normally gone into the garbage now to be honest the laptop itself had been donated to me since its motherboard was toast but it this does make a a really good reuse for for some technology and keep some stuff from getting into the landfill now most of the manufacturers that uh, that manufacture these boards do so for just about every type of LCD there is. 
Right, the one thing that uh, that is never included with these, it seems like, is the power supply. Um, and the one piece with the power supply that you want to pay attention to is most of them say they need like three amps. Uh, the three to four amp ones are recommended at that level if the backlight for the, the monitor is CFL, then definitely three or four amps. The LED ones I find only draw about an amp, but better to be safe than sorry and give it the three amps that it wants. And you can see that this particular panel can feed up to, or this particular controller can feed panels up to 2048 by 11, uh, by 1152. So not the, the true 1080p, but more than enough for, for what we want. So yeah, you can see that there's a bunch more here too with uh, different capabilities than the, the, the one that I got. Again, you'll see this panel, this, this entire project used again uh, with the ex the planetary exploration rover, because this will be the monitor for its ground station. Okay, so once you have the controller, uh, you can see it comes with a control panel, right, and a cable that goes to the monitor itself. It accepts the 12 volt input, HDMI, DVI, VGA, the audio in and audio out. And then converts that into the LV LVDS signal that the monitor needs to process. So this is going to be a very quick build for us. So let's put this together and, uh, and get forward. So we just started the hot glue gun heating up. Uh, I have a rather crappy hot glue gun, so this is going to take a little bit of time. So what we're going to do first off, what I like to do, flip this over. Making sure that the bench is clean so that you do not scratch the screen at all. Gonna make sure that this scrap of uh, cardboard that we cut is gonna fit. I'm gonna put it right about here. That way, this connector over here, where the LVDS cable goes, is clearly exposed and clearly available to us. All right. So while we're waiting for the glue gun to uh, to, to heat up, I want to take a, a point and talk about the positioning of this board. The way I generally like this board to sit with the connectors coming down that way all the wires come out the bottom of the new monitor so it will probably sit here something like this um, if I am going to include the the button array I usually put that to the side like this and then the LVDS cable can come in between them and come and plug into the actual monitor itself all right so let's see yep my hot glue gun is now hot so I'm just gonna go ahead apply some hot glue in a couple of areas here. Not as hot as I would have liked, but it will work. And we'll just plunk that down like so. Put some pressure to it. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with the control board. People have tried to tell me that hot glue is not a man's tool. They're lying. This stuff is phenomenal. Alright, so now that we got that side stuck to there, the next thing we're going to want to do is get a bunch of hot glue on the back of this. Bunch of hot glue on the back of that. Make sure that we have this oriented properly, and that that LVDS connector is clear. And we're just going to place it in the back of the monitor. Add a little bit of pressure. Okay. So now that that's on there, take our uh, LVDS cable. Put this in place so you can see what I'm doing. And there, it does only go in one way. We're figuring out what way that is to be a pain in the ass. 
key here is not to force it. If you force this connector, you will break this connector, and then the screen is pretty much pooped. Of course, you could be like me and just attack it from completely the wrong side. That's what happens when you've been sick. Brain starts to fail you when you get old and sick. And the next step that you can obviously do if you have a 3D printer is design and print an enclosure for this. This is actually going to go into a bigger project that you get to see later on. Uh, this is going to be part of the ground station for our planetary exploration rover. A project that I announced just before I got sick. Okay. That comes on, and we see the monitor powers up. It's currently in Chinese. That is one thing we're gonna need to fix because I don't read Mandarin or Cantonese. All the failing on my part, but it's just the way it is. All right, so I'm gonna put that there like that. I'm just gonna make sure that we can see what we're doing here. All right, so I'm just booting up a HDMI video source at this point. Uh, some of you may recognize the, the project that's loading. It's just a Raspberry Pi from my uh, media center. Booting up and running. And as you can see, we've resurrected this monitor. Uh, this came from a laptop whose motherboard was fried. Uh, so it would have wound up in the landfill had we not been able to work with it. This is, I understand, a very quick little one-day build that, uh, that you can bang out in, a, in, in an hour or so. But it really does bring back things uh, that would wind up in the landfill and helps keep our planet a little cleaner. I hate seeing things getting thrown out. I love to collect them and fix them when I when I do see that. So, uh, so yeah, that's how you resurrect a monitor from a dead laptop and make it useful again. Now, of course, you can use this as a secondary display for your computer as well, right? Or a video monitor if you're a YouTuber, so that you can see what uh, what's being recorded by your camera if you're using like a DSLR. Uh, it can be used as a portable entertainment thing. It can be used in the Raspberry Pi table that I built. There's really no, there's really no restriction here. You have an ultra-thin screen that can go into a lot more projects than some of the LCDs that we've used in the past. Well, I hope you learned something today. Thank you for joining me in the lab. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on all my content. Don't forget to like share, and as I said, subscribe, and I will see you next time.